This week I wanted to share a quick story I saw in the news about iPS cells and bone growth. Now I've mentioned iPS cells in the past, but as a quick reminder, iPS cells are induced pluripotent stem cells. Now there are different kinds of stem cells. Some of them are multipotent, so you have stem cells in your bone and in your bone marrow which can go on to create many different types of blood cells. There are also things known as pluripotent stem cells, and pluripotent stem cells can go on to create any sort of cell in your body. However, unlike stem cells, most of the cells in our body are differentiated. This means that they have started at their, you know, stem cell beginnings and then they've gone down a path to become a certain cell type. So you can have a skin cell or you can have a red blood cell or you can have a neuron, but once that cell reaches that state, it will stay differentiated and it will stay as that one thing if left alone. However, undifferentiated stem cells can have some really interesting possibilities. So, induced pluripotent stem cells are when you take one of those differentiated cells, you express within it four genes that are sort of stem cell genes, and you return it to a pluripotent stem cell state. And this is cool because from that state, those pluripotent stem cells can go on to create any other cell type in the body, so you can do just that. You can take a differentiated skin cell, express these four genes in it, bring it back to being a pluripotent stem cell, and then from there, go on to create something entirely different, like a neuron. Amazing. So on May 6th, a team at the New York Stem Cell Foundation put out a release that they are working on using these sorts of iPS cells to try and help treat traumatic bone injury. Now they're still in the early phases, but things are looking promising. So what they're doing is they're taking skin cells, they're returning them to a pluripotent stem cell state, and then they're making them into bone cells. Next, they take these cells and they seed them onto a 3D scaffold. So this way it can sort of start to take the shape of a bone. And what they do is they place that scaffold with these seeded cells on it into what's known as a bioreactor. So this helps deliver nutrients to the cells, it helps remove waste, so it creates a body-like condition for these cells. In this way, the scientists are beginning to create sort of bone substitutes, and the hope is that down the road, you can create these bone substitutes in the shapes and sizes needed to help treat patients with traumatic bone injuries. Now they haven't done this in people yet, but one of the main concerns with using this sort of therapy is that undifferentiated iPS cells could go on to create teratomas, a type of tumor. So they have done animal studies, they've looked at 12-week studies in mice, and they've implanted these bone substitutes into the mice. And they haven't seen any malignancies, which is great, but they have started to see the correct formation of bone structures and the sort of beginning formations of uh, blood vessels and everything going into those bone. Because bone isn't just, you know, a rock that's hanging out in your body. There's a lot of tissue structures and stuff happening in it, and they started to see the formation, the proper formation of all of these structures and sort of vasculatures in these mice. And this is huge. This is great. And they are, you know, saying that this is still far down the road, but these are some very promising first results. Now, one of the most exciting things about using iPS cells in treatment is that you are using the patient's own cells, and so there's not as much fear of rejection. So if you imagine someone who gets an organ donation, they often have to go on large regimens of immunosuppressant drugs so that their immune system doesn't try and reject that organ. But if you're creating these organs or these bone structures from the patient's own cells, the body's going to recognize them and it's not going to try and reject them. And this could have huge implications down the road. And these aren't the only labs that are working on them. There are a lot of labs who are working on trying to use a patient's own cells to grow bone structures and organs that could be transplanted back into their bodies. This means that there's no fear of rejection, that you don't have to wait for a donor, or that you don't have to wait for cadaver organs. And this could be huge. So another promising step for one of my personal favorite current things happening in research, iPS cells. Go forth. Do science.